Serious, what's something so bizarre and unusual that's happened to you that you do not share it with many people? Don't forget to like and subscribe to support us. Well, when I was about 10 years old, I lived in this townhome area, and there was a driveway slash parking concrete and a townhouse on each side. Each house holds two separate homes, I was walking from the road up the driveway, very steep driveway, you can't see the parking concrete from the road, and I saw this big silver metal disc bang into my neighbor's townhouse on the left, bounce off, hit my townhouse on the right, and then hit the townhouse on the left again on my other neighbor's home, and it disappeared. So I run up my steep driveway to see where it went off to, and it's gone. I thought it was some other kid's frisbee, but it was way too high up, going way too fast, and it bounced off two houses 40 feet away from each other, and it was far too large to be frisbee, it was round metal and about 2 feet in diameter. Too small to be an alien UFO, but big enough to be a drone? This was a few years ago at my parents' house. My room used to be on their third floor, basically an attic made into a nice room, and I was laying on my bed doing some reading for my homework. It wasn't that late, maybe 9-ish, and I was wide awake. I suddenly felt something poke my back through the mattress. Like a person pushing their finger up through a mattress from under the bed. I froze in fear, as I was the only one gone alone with the dogs. Now they weren't freaking out doing anything unusual, and the doors had been locked all day, except for when I was downstairs and let them out. So after a few minutes of terrifying fear, I grab my phone, switch on the flashlight, and look under the bed. I saw nothing. Nothing at all, just empty like it should have been. I used to have visions, premonitions, etc. very, very clear, but also random and not by choice. Started when I was a kid and stopped with the death of my husband. My sister feels it was a coping mechanism to deal with abuse that I refused to disclose to anyone while being abused. Random things like knowing a cop was on the side of the road around the bend ahead, a blue sedan was ahead, a brown truck was about to come around the corner. Some audio things, like the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger warning me that the truck ahead has no brake lights, yeah, I know. Weird AF. My kids grew up with this, and my husband was very aware but refused to acknowledge it. I didn't tell people because who would believe that shit? I remember hearing the distinctive voice of my husband's supervisor telling him where he was being transferred to three months before he was notified of it. It was like deja vu, but it happened regularly. You just get used to it. I actually miss it now. I wish I could have used it to pick lottery numbers, but that's not how it works. Okay, I'm going to try my best to put this into words because it's so strange, I don't think I can even describe it. I've never talked about it with anyone. When I was about 10 years old, some members of my family and I took a long distance trip in a car. We were in a bad car accident. I guess we all fell asleep, including the driver. What's weird is that, while we were sleeping, I was dreaming of the accident happening. I remember dreaming about my uncle telling my cousin, who was driving, to be careful and try to take control of the car to avoid the accident. I remember we were all screaming and really scared because we knew the accident was inevitable, but in reality, no one was awake. No one remembers this happening, we all just fell asleep, but it's so strange because I remember we were screaming, watching the car lose control, and then flipping over. In reality, we were all asleep and awakened by the motion of the accident. Or maybe we were awake and didn't all fall asleep? I don't know, but it was the weirdest experience of my life. Around the age of 12 to 13, I had a sleepover with a friend. We stayed the night in the living room of my grandparents' house on a pull-out couch right in front of the main door to the house. We stayed up watching TV and eating junk food, then figured it was time to go to bed. We cut off the TV and let the silence of the night lull us to bed while talking about random kid stuff. As our conversations began to lose steam, silences became longer and sentences became shorter. It was mid-fall, and dry leaves were covering the front porch all the way up to the front door. As I was lying on the pullout, I heard the leaves begin to crunch as if someone were walking closer. I heard the same sound dozens of times growing up in that house either from my own feet or anxiously awaiting my dad to come pick me up once he got off work. I heard the echo of cracking leaves under the porch as shoes plodded to the door. I knew it was footsteps. From where I was lying on the pull-out couch bed, I could see the front door. It was only a few yards away, but my grandparents always kept full-length curtains pulled over the window frame door at night, so all I could hear was the crunching of fall leaves under an enclosing set of feet. I brushed it off. Maybe it was a squirrel or a small animal rustling around but it was harder to ignore as the sound closed in and became more defined. I sat up and asked my friend, do you hear that? Hear what? I didn't respond. I had to listen. The footsteps stopped. 
the quiet of the room flooded my ears, and my heart marched in deep thuds throughout my body. Then a rattle of keys as if selecting the right one on a keering. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Surely I was mistaken. I heard the key being inserted into the lock. The clicks of the pins moving up as their keys moved slowly into the door knob. I couldn't take it anymore. I was wide awake. My friend was right beside me. We weren't dreaming, and whoever was on the other side of that door was there, and they had a key. I yelled to my grandparents. They shuffled in, and I told them what happened. The strangest thing, though, is that my friend never heard anything. No keys, no crunching leaves, nothing. Also, I didn't hear footsteps exit the porch, which would have had to happen even if they were intending to leave without making noise. Both of my great-grandparents died in that house, so maybe that had something to do with it, but I'm not one to believe in spirits, and I'm very much against religion to the point of atheism. But if it was a person, I don't understand why I didn't hear their footsteps leave the front porch. Last but not least, my grandparents' house is at the end of a long, circular driveway, and it is not in a cookie-cutter suburb, so a mistaken identity, as in pulling into the wrong house, seems very unlikely. Sorry, it was a bit long and maybe not that interesting, but I tried to tell it as I remembered it, and this thread reminded me of it. I forget about it for stretches of time until something brings it back up. It's the only truly weird story I have, and it's 100% real. I was around 8 or 10 when this happened to me. I remember it being dark, maybe around 10. I was in my sister's room with my mom and my sister. My sister's bed was facing a window in her room her bed was sideways, and the window was at the foot of the bed. I was sitting on my mom's feet she was lying down, and my sister was facing a mirror in front of the bed. I remember having a fun time and laughing. Out of nowhere, I get this feeling that I have to look out the window. It's a strong feeling that I need to look out the window. I heard a sound, and that sound was coming from the window. The sound was only loud enough for me to hear, it was a faint tap. I remember peeking through the window and looking straight at a pair of red eyes. They were a bold red and seemed to glow. It felt like I was staring for a long time. I don't know how I had to be the only one to see it, but the first thing that came to mind was blue from Foster's home for imaginary friends. I don't know why I thought it was blue. Thinking back, it was ridiculous to think that, but back to the story. I told my mom that I had seen something out the window, but she just told me it was my imagination. So I went to my dad, who was in the living room watching TV and I explained to him what I had seen. I had urged him to go check it out. My dad had gone to check it out, and I had gone with him. There was nothing there. He just brushed it off and said it was my imagination playing tricks on me. I know it wasn't my imagination. Fast forward, I was around 13 years old, and I was now staying in my sister's room aka, where the weird shiz happened. I had stayed up because it wasn't a school night. I stayed up until 11 and heard a sound coming from my window. It sounded as if someone were tapping on the window. I froze. I was scared. I remember staying still, hoping that the knocking would stop, but it kept going for at least 30 seconds. It sucks. Now I have to live thinking about this. When I was in high school, I had what I can only describe as a sort of seizure. I was lying in bed, and all of a sudden my body went rigid to the degree that the muscles on the side of my forehead hurt from my teeth clenching. I was like that for 30 seconds, and then I went limp and then rigid again, in 30 seconds waves for about 10 times. When I went rigid, I saw the room at a different time and felt the presence of another consciousness, like I was seeing the room through someone else's eyes. Long story short, what I saw was the room in what appeared to be a pre-electricity era, in the body of another girl. I knew things about her and felt her consciousness. Something horrible was happening to her, and I was there with her, living it too, while also having a seizure. Nothing like this has happened before or since. It's easy to adopt a medical explanation, except I knew the girl's name. And a couple years later, when my mom and her friends were talking about children and imaginary friends, my mom said I didn't quite have an imaginary friend, but I used to talk a lot about a girl named the same thing as that girl and claim she was hurt. Usually in that same room, too. I once could not see someone everyone else saw. I worked for a large, extended family business and was also close personal friends with many members of the family. Over the years, the employee line blurred, and I was invited to many of the family-only events. At one such event, a celebratory buffet-style dinner, I had gotten my food and sat with my friends. As each group trickled in, there would be some good-humored harassment like, hurry up, the food is almost gone. So in comes the four sisters although they each had families, they were all really, really close and enjoyed each other's company. One sister was taller and younger, but the three older sisters were extremely similar, hard to tell apart from the back similarities. They were very individual, 
otherwise, and you'd never mistake them from the front. So they came in, and I realized one was missing. I asked my friend quietly where Sister 2 was. She looked at me weirdly and said right there with Sisters 1 and 3. I looked again but couldn't see Sister 2 anywhere. I didn't push the issue because I assumed it was just me. During dinner, I kept looking but never saw her. We finished early and headed out to the movies. About 4 hours later, my friend received a text saying to call home immediately. Apparently, Sister 2 had an attack, cardiac, I believe, after we left, and they took her to the hospital, but she passed. My friend was really weird about it afterwards and thought I was spooky for a while. We're still friends, and we don't talk about it, but I know she told other family members because there are still comments. I don't talk about it because it was just weird, awkward, and scary at the time. Everywhere I go, I get offered drugs. College is where it all started, but it's not just because there are drugs all over the place. I'm always singled out when I'm with friends or walking along the street. If there's a guy selling drugs, he's going to offer me some. I studied abroad for a semester and was offered drugs every time I went out in Ireland, where I was studying, and I'm talking specifically about me. I was always with a group of at least six people, and I'd always get singled out and offered something. In one club in Ireland for five minutes, and next thing I know, I'm doing Jager bombs with two Irish guys and being offered a chance to sniff something off the girls dressed as angels, walking around Belfast and being offered drugs by a guy handing out flyers. I took a trip to London and was not only offered drugs but was also befriended by a drug supplier when I accidentally helped him catch and beat one of his dealers for being with his girl. A trip to Italy resulted in a hilarious encounter with some drug dealers at night the very second I stepped out of the heat lamps of an outdoor bar. Apparently, I look like a druggie. This sin isn't even half of it. I clean houses for a living these days. I was cleaning a house for a man and his teenage son. He was transferred for work and needed to sell in two months. Trouble is, the house was a disaster. It was disgusting. The agent said it was the nastiest house I've seen in 20 years selling houses. It took two days to clean. Anyway, the man was at work while I was cleaning both days, and his son was in the basement playing video games both days. I am in the bathroom, bent over, cleaning the tub. Suddenly, I felt someone smack my ass. It wasn't just a tap. It was a smack, and the pressure stayed on my ass for a few milliseconds after. I swiftly turned around with a yelp. Nobody there. Nothing was anywhere near my ass. There was no possible way it was the sun. I shrug it off and keep cleaning. Toward the middle of the second day, I realize I need help and decide to call a buddy and ask her if she wants a few bucks to do some of the work. She agrees and comes right over. I sent her to do touch-up work in all three bathrooms and vacuum the floors upstairs. Not ten minutes later, she comes to me. When you were cleaning the bathroom yesterday, did you feel like someone was standing right behind you? My eyes bulged out of my head. I asked her which bathroom she was referring to, and it was the same one I felt someone slap my ass in. I told her what happened to me then, and she said she had to leave. Later, she texted me, saying she felt this horrible vibe the moment she walked into the house. I had it cleaned up like a nice normal house by then, so there was no reason for her to get any bad vibes from the house being nasty, and after the bathroom, she couldn't stay any longer. In 8th grade, each student had school-issued locks for their lockers. We would get in trouble if we somehow lost them, forgot the combination, etc. So one day, in between classes, I walked past my locker to see that the lock went missing while I was in class, I had used my locker in the morning and snapped it shut before heading off to class. I have no idea how this happened, I never shared my combination with anyone, and I opened the lock very quickly, so I'm not sure how anyone could have seen me put in the combination. I was very upset because I didn't want to get in trouble. The day progressed, and after eating lunch, I headed back towards my locker to put away my lunchbox. Along the way, I looked over at a random lock, and, trying to make myself feel better, I jokingly said to myself, this one kind of looks like mine even though they were all identical. I walk over to this random kid's locker and put in my combination, and the lock opens. I had no idea whose locker this was or how they had my lock, but I was glad to have my lock back so that I wouldn't get in trouble. I didn't tell the school's office because I didn't want to get in trouble for supposedly taking someone else's lock, as I'm sure they wouldn't have believed my story. So this is something that happened to me when I was around 5, but I guess I immediately suppressed it because I didn't remember it until I was around 12 and I never told anyone about it because, like, it's really hard to believe I remember going into my living room when I was 5 sometime around sunset. I laid down on the sofa and watched the sky through the window until I ended up dozing off. I remember waking up and walking to my bedroom to sleep because it was now dark out. It was not too weird, and life went on as normal. 
I remember making friends in school and moving out of the apartment when I was seven, and I remember my first years of middle school. I was around 14, and I was crossing the street to the bus stop with my best friend Trevor. I heard Trevor yell my name, and I turned, looking to the left, and I saw a bus for a fraction of a second before everything went blank. I remember waking up back on the couch in my living room and looking out the window as the sun was setting. I was five years old again in my old apartment, completely oblivious to what I had just dreamed. Thinking about it now really fucks me sometimes because I can remember things from that life and living through all those years. I know it's hard to believe this, but that's why I never tell anyone about it. I saw something weird in the sky. I was about eight or nine years old. I woke up in the early hours of the morning, which is something that happened fairly often back then. I pinched myself to see if I was awake, which was also a habit of mine, and then just lay there looking out the window. I had my curtains open because it was summer and it helped disperse the heat, so I could see onto the street and the row of houses opposite mine. This intensely bright yellow white ball about the size of a Volkswagen descended out of the sky. It had a long tail and prominences rising and falling on its surface. Its glow was so bright that it lit up the street and the houses across the street. I just had time to panic that it was going to hit the road when it did a 180 and headed straight back up out of sight. The next day, I told my parents, who laughed and said I had interesting dreams. I don't think so, unless you can imagine pinching your hip so hard it hurts. I've always wondered what it was I saw. Probably not ball lightning. That needs dry conditions, and our summers are humid. Before it was drained, my area was a swamp and well known for marsh gas lights, but those are blue rather than yellow, and there haven't been any reported for many years. I'll probably always be left wondering. I grew up in the same house as my grandmother. Actually, it was the same one my grandfather lived in and died in. It's a big farmhouse, and my grandmother had her own living room and kitchen. The older my grandmother got, the meaner and grumpier she got. She wasn't the nicest person to be around, but she had a soft spot for me. She used to tell me I was going to be a priest. That would have been her dream. Her living room was by the stairs, and any time she heard my footsteps, she could tell who was going up or down by their footsteps, she would call me in to do something for her or just a chat. I enjoyed it, so I was always happy to call in. She always got out of bed around 6 a.m., and when she got older, she would call me in the mornings to make her a cup of tea. Which I always did before going to school. She called me by my full name, Thomas, even though everyone, including my parents, called me Tom. When I was about 18, my grandmother passed away. She was in her 80s and died in her sleep. The funeral was huge, and she got a good send-off. Two days after the funeral, Everyone in my family was going back to work. That morning, only my mom and I were left in the house. I was making a cup of tea, and out of nowhere I heard Thomas. Thomas. I honestly thought I was going mad. I turned to my mom, who was sitting at the kitchen table, and her face was white. She had heard it too. I was freaked out by this, but my mom, being a religious woman, calmed me down and told me that it was only her wanting to say goodbye. My mother claims to have heard it again a few weeks later, when I left the house to go to university. We've never told my dad this story as he took it very bad when his mother died. He is quite superstitious, and I think this would freak him out a little. For many decades, my childhood bed frame has always creeped me out. It was built by my deceased grandfather, who passed away when I was 13 years old. I hated that bed frame because it always shook every night. Sometimes it would mildly shake, but other times it would violently shake out of the blue. I'd loudly complain to my family, they would relentlessly remind me that there was no earthquake, and it was just my imagination. In high school, I'd look up news about earthquakes, even minor ones, in my area because it never stopped shaking every night. Ever. My family will come in to check it out, and it will suddenly stop there with a dead, silent pause in the air. My family never believed me for years. When I left for college, I shrugged those experiences off, assuming that I had an overactive imagination as a child, especially when I was lonely all the time. After college, I stayed with my parents for a year to get back on my feet by paying off debts while working. One night I was reading a book, and I eventually noticed that my cat was acting strange. At the foot of the bed, she glanced at me and briefly stared at me with wide green eyes. Then, boom, my bed started violently shaking, and then she jumped off the bed. She loudly hissed at whatever was under the bed. She was spitting all over the place, her hair absolutely stood up, and then she swiped at something under my bed. My bed stopped shaking right there, and I was so scared that I screamed for my cat to get onto the bed, but she refused to acknowledge my presence. She intensely stared at the space under the bed, and being terrified out of my mind, I forced myself to look under the bed. There was nothing. I knew I was not crazy. 
My cat is one of those cats that doesn't give a flying fuck in general, but the fact that she freaked out as the bed shook will always haunt me. I knew something was wrong with that frame, and hey, it was not my imagination. My bed frame is still there in my parents' house. My father refuses to get rid of it, saying that I must pass it down to my children. Hell no. My half-sister sleeps in that bed from time to time, and she mentioned to my parents once that she really hates the bed because it creeps her out. I got a couple of stories, but the freakiest thing that ever happened to me was one day, me, my two sisters, and our Chinese tutor, as in someone who taught us Chinese and also was Chinese because we lived in China at the time, were playing a game that involved a hacky sack. Well, someone throws the hacky sack, I don't remember who, and it lands on the ground. Everyone can see where it landed. So I walk over to grab it, and my vision becomes unfocused for a second, and then when it refocuses, the hacky sack is gone. This was a group phenomenon, and it happened to my sisters and tutor too. So fast forward a week or so, and the hacky sack shows up one morning right where it had landed the week before. I have no idea how. Freaked me the fuck out. I've had several other experiences of things dropping into a different dimension, as I like to put it. I don't believe that's what actually happens, but it's the best way I can put it, so that's what I call it. Years ago, when I was living with my parents, our house got broken into, and they stole some shit. There wasn't much for the police to go on, although we were pretty sure we knew who broke in. Later that night, my parents went for a walk, leaving me home alone. After all, it's not like our house would get broken into twice in one day. Right? Well, I was on the phone with my friend when I heard voices outside of my house. I snuck to the stairs to peek out the window, and I saw two men, one large and one scrawny, right outside in my driveway looking into the basement windows, that they'd broken to get in earlier. Luckily, they saw me move the cutter and freaked out and left, so their second attempt at our house was foiled. But I still shudder to think what would have happened if just one of them had been a little ballsier. Only two people told me this. It freaked me out so much. So I am about 17 or 18 and on my way to a friend's house, where I regularly hang out. When I get to his place, I get out of my car and notice there is a storm blowing in, very windy, flashes of lightning. Better get inside. My buddy was with his girlfriend and a couple of her friends, whom I didn't know. The girlfriend and her friends were taking shots of UV blue and became increasingly annoying by the second. I decided to leave. I was there for no more than 20 minutes. Leaving, I stopped on the covered porch to light a cigarette. I noticed that the air is completely still, there is no sign of a storm. A complete 180 from 20 minutes ago stepping off of the porch, looking at the ground, and walking towards my car, I hear a loud rustling. My car was parked beneath a tree, and I saw that a large branch directly over my car was violently shaking up and down. Shaking like something was trying to rip it off of the tree. I walk slowly, feeling very weirded out, looking at the branch, trying to figure out what the hell was in the tree making all this noise. I thought to myself, no animal, except maybe a leopard, could make that big branch move like that. I live in Missouri, there are no leopards here. I reach for my door handle while looking at the branch shake, and as soon as I touch my car door, I see the faintest blue light shoot up out of the tree, making the quietest tooping noise. Like the sound of a firework going off before it explodes, but very quiet. I yelled oh fuck and darted for the front door of my friend's house. I thought lightning was about to hit my car or something. I get inside, sweaty and shaking, and tell my friend and everyone else what happened. Of course, they laugh and think I'm crazy. I went home to my dad and sister, to whom I told the same thing and got the same response. Fast forward 8 years, and I still have no idea what that was. I don't like recalling the story to friends because I think it makes me sound crazy. I wish I knew what that was. When I was 5 or 6 years old, I was in Iran with family, I live in the US, but we were there to visit. My grandma there was awesome, and I loved her so much. Sometimes, during the night, I would sleep in the bed because she said she was scared and wanted protection. Me being me, I would obviously protect her and feel important. One night, her husband was late at work, everyone had gone to sleep, and she invited me again. I was in bed waiting to go to sleep when, all of a sudden, she started breathing badly. She was gasping for air, not able to breathe, and obviously panicking. I yelled at my parents to come, but they didn't. I had to run their room quickly, and as soon as I did, they quickly got up. I took her to the hospital, and it was around 3 a.m., she had vomited on herself multiple times. It turns out she had cancer and a seizure in bed. Traumatized me for my life and still breaks my heart. Here are two. One is the only time I've ever encountered racism as a white person, the other is just really weird. First, 
I used to shop at a Middle Eastern import store in the area where I worked. It was run by two kind old Lebanese immigrants, a husband and wife. Wonderful people. If you asked about something, they'd let you try it for free. They loved having a white customer here and there. Then, one day, I went in, and their son was running the till. He was probably in his late 20s. At these kinds of stores, there isn't really a queue to speak of. People just crowd around the register and wait to be picked up to ring out. Well, this kit rang everyone out except me. When I was the last person there, they were nearly ready to close for the night. I asked as nicely as possible, could you ring me out? He said, put your stuff back and leave. You're not welcome here, you make my customers uncomfortable. I had never had such a complaint from his parents, who'd happily taken my money numerous times. I went through the trouble of putting everything back exactly where it went, and I left, and I haven't been back since. Second, I was in my basement one night, and a massive moth the size of a hummingbird had gotten in and was flying around a light bulb. I tried to ignore it, but the shadows it cast were annoying me while I was doing some intricate soldering. I took a big, heavy music book and slammed this moth against the concrete wall. There is no way I didn't get it, and it would be impossible to miss this thing. I lifted the book, and there was nothing. I'm convinced I knocked it into another dimension. I've never shared this. Mostly because I forget about it on and off. I'm old now, and this happened when I was 17. I'll never forget it, though. There was this girl I liked. She was the sister of a friend of mine. It was all good, though. I didn't know if I had a shot with her. I was at my friend's house, and she was on her way over. I went to the bathroom to look at myself and straighten up. I asked whatever I thought God was to give me a sign. Should I go for it? Will this girl respond? In that moment, the light in the bathroom blew out. Like a flash and a pop. She came in about two minutes later and seemed happy to see me. I gave her a hug, and from the way she hugged back, I knew I was tapping into what my 17-year-old self said. Really weird. Sure, it could have been a coincidence, but the odds have to be insane. My friend did not have problems with light bulbs blowing in that house. The breaker was fine too. I have predicted the future many times. The first time was when I was a kid at an overnight summer camp. One day we were eating lunch, and I suddenly started to feel really sad. When asked, I said, I think my dad just got hurt. The counselors didn't really think anything of it since I was just a kid, and I was probably just feeling homesick. Anyway, that night, the camp director called me into his office to tell me that my dad had gotten into a car accident. Okay, that's weird, but it could have just been a coincidence, right? The next time happened about a year ago, in the middle of the night. I woke up suddenly and thought, my dog just died. Thinking it was just a nightmare, I dismissed it, only to find that my dog had died. The most recent time I predicted the future was about a month ago. I was driving down a highway towards my house when I suddenly had the thought, I'm going to get in an accident. Sure enough, a woman merged straight into my car. I know all this sounds completely crazy and fake, as does everyone I tell. But it's really true. I used to live in a small town surrounded by a lot of forests. In one of the forests was an old junked out car and a fire pit that was probably used either by the homeless or teenagers having bush parties. When I was 14, for whatever reason, myself and some friends would often go to this car to hang out, talk, and throw rocks at it. One day, we came there and found dozens of Polaroid photos scattered all around the car. However, they were all waterlogged and damaged, so we couldn't make out what any of the photos may have been. A week or so later, we go back to the car again. There are many more photos scattered around it now. We take a look, but like last time, most have been ruined by the elements. Unlike last time, we did find a few photos that were not ruined. There were two of us standing around the car. By the position we were in in the photos, we figured whoever took them had done so from a clump of bushes no more than 25 feet from the car. The third photo was of an extremely tall man in a brown robe with a massive boner sticking out the front of it. It looked like it was taken in the same woods, but not near the car. I had no idea what all of that was about. I was walking up the aisle in a grocery store at around 11 p.m., and an elderly man who was facing the shelf sort of turned into my path and looked me in the eyes. It's an urban area, so there are plenty of crazies, so I assumed he was going to tell me about some conspiracy theory, but what he started to whisper got my attention. He said, don't go that way. And then I immediately noticed some drops of what looked like blood on the floor just past him, and then said something like, there's a man with a broken bottle back there. Assuming someone was attacking customers I turned around and started to head toward the front of the store. It was at this time that I noticed there was a gathering of employees and customers near the registers facing toward the rest of the store. 
I glance back and see a man emerging from the aisle next to the one I just came from with his shirt torn in a Hulk Hogan fashion and sort of dangling from his shoulders like a vest. In his hand was a glass water bottle, one of those big blue Saratoga water bottles, with the end broken off. He was stabbing himself in the chest and stomach repeatedly as he walked into the store. There was blood running all down the front of him and all over his jeans. He had a blank stare in his eyes and continued past us to the left and toward the refrigerated food section. We all stood there in shock. I don't think anyone said a single thing to him. Moments later, half a dozen cops came jogging by, and we pointed them in the right direction. Long story short, they surrounded him with a wide 10-foot perimeter and tried to talk him down. He dropped the bottle, and they put cuffs on him. The officer had rubber gloves on because the guy was completely covered in blood. I don't know what happened afterwards, whether he was on drugs, suicidal, or had a mental illness. I still think about it to this day, and this happened probably 20 years ago. I was in 8th grade. Shy and reserved, not many friends, you get the picture. The only people I played with at recess were the kindergarten kids. There was a sweet little girl who, for some reason, always wanted me to play with her. That was way back in 1999. I am now dating that girl. By some twist of fate, we have the same hobby as adults. We met up not too long ago, and I asked her out. Something in my mind, after the fact, told me she looked familiar, but we didn't piece it together until I mentioned where I went to school. Then she was like wait, what? We were so amazed that we actually crossed paths and interacted with one another almost 20 years ago, and we had no clue we'd see each other again. She's 23, I'm 31, and we have never been happier. I don't tell anyone this because they might be weirded out or judge me in some way. I mean, what are the odds? I want to preface this by saying that I'm pretty open-minded about the paranormal. My mother is overly religious and believes that anything supernatural is from the devil. A few years ago, my uncle, a policeman, passed away. About a week later, I was out running errands and was overwhelmed by the feeling that his presence was in the car with me. The feeling got stronger and stronger. I was sure that if I looked in the rear view mirror, I would see him sitting in the back seat. In my head, I'm thinking, this is really happening, I'm not imagining it. So, I said to my uncle, if it's really you, give me a sign. At that moment, the volume on my car's CD player turned up full blast to a line in ACDC's song Shake a Leg Fighting on the Wrong Side of the Law, of the Law. OMG, I had to pull off into a parking lot. I started crying, just shocked as shit. I couldn't believe it. Then, my mother's warning about all such things being evil kicked in, and I was losing it. The parking lot was packed, so I drove around and around trying to find a parking spot. I needed to calm down, get out of the car, and breathe. So after driving around the lot for a few minutes, I found the only open spot, parked, looked up, and in front of me was a truck with a sticker on the window that said, relax, Jesus loves you. I swear this is true. My mom was in a UFO cult when I was growing up. It wasn't anything you'd see on TV, just some weird hippies getting swindled out of a few thousand dollars to listen to a British guy talk about aliens, mountains, and yoga. As far as I can tell, the biggest impacts on my life were that I'm extremely suspicious of new age things and that I'm pretty well educated about various religions. I don't tell a ton of people because there's not much I can say. I was raised Christian with the hope I'd later join the cult. I didn't, so a lot of the specifics I know about their beliefs come from their website and not my upbringing. The actual church was like a new agey church decorated by hippies. It had shag carpet. Just instead of a cross at the front of the sanctuary, it was a giant creepy photo of a middle-aged British man. The pastor had a dog I got to pet every week, and I colored or napped when the service was happening. Also, sometimes people fight me, saying it's just a weird denomination of Christianity. It's not, they absolutely worship invisible aliens who live on the other planets of our solar system, of whom Jesus was one but also Master Buddha and possibly Dr. King, so I don't know how else to explain this not wrong Christianity. Maybe the blessed mountains and prayer batteries but people seriously will still say if there's Jesus, it's flat out Christianity, even though they identify themselves as a UFO religion. Finally, I forgot it was weird. I'll have conversations about religion, and it's not until I'm asked about my upbringing and have to explain aliens that I remember that not everyone grew up with a mom who believes aliens are real and are saviors. That's just how I grew up. When I was about 10 years old, my parents purchased a used RV. I remember one of the nights before a road trip, we all slept in the RV just to get a feel for what it was going to be like. Me and my siblings slept in the top bunk, which was located above the driver's seat. Coming down from the bunk and heading towards the back of the RV was the kitchen area, followed by the bathroom, 
and then my parents' bed in the back. I ended up waking up in the middle of the night when it was pitch black. I looked down from the bunk, and in between the kitchen and bathroom area, I saw a white figure standing still. There was no movement, no noise, nothing. Of course, I was terrified. For some reason, I came down from the bunk and walked to where my parents were sleeping so I could sleep with them. Once I came down from the bunk, the figure disappeared, so I hopped into bed with my parents. I ended up falling asleep, only to wake up a short time later. Once I woke up, I saw the figure standing in the exact same spot as earlier. Since I was closer to it this time, I turned my back on it. I eventually fell asleep for the rest of the night and told my parents about it in the morning. They didn't believe me at all, but I had someone come out to check the RV just in case. As it turns out, there was a gas leak coming from the stove, which was right where the figure had been standing. I am not religious whatsoever, but this event has always scared and humbled me. I went camping once, and in the back of the lot I rented, in the woods, there was this abandoned cabin that glowed red, like a flare, from the inside at night. I checked it in the mornings, and there was nothing, just an empty cabin with some signatures and doodles on the walls. I asked the locals about it, and they either don't know what I'm talking about or outright refuse to talk about it. One day, a dog was barking and ran to the cabin. It immediately went quiet, and I could hear the owner calling for the dog. Another day, these kids are playing around in the lot next to me while I roast food on my fire. I see them playing and yelling, and then they go into the cabin, and everything goes quiet. Their mother comes up to me and asks me where they are, and I point at the cabin. She starts crying while looking at the cabin, and her husband walks up and looks at it dumbfounded. The next day, I got out of that campsite and went home. A couple years later, I ask one of the locals what the deal was with the cabin, and they tell me that it's haunted or something. This is not my story, but it was told to me by my Aunt Lisa. Lisa is very religious, and in general, my religious family summarily rejects the idea of ghosts, etc. because of their fervent belief in an afterlife. Regardless, she told me this story about when she was babysitting back in the late 1960s. We're from a rural farming community in Maine, and the house she was at was a very old farmhouse from the 1800s. She was actually babysitting overnight, and around 12, she went upstairs to go to bed. Before, she carefully checked the locks because she was alone, excluding the two kids, both under two, in a big, creepy house, then went to bed. There was a bowl of grapes on the downstairs countertop. In the morning, when she woke up, she went downstairs. On each stair on the way down, there was a single grape. When I was a child, maybe seven or eight, we lived in an apartment. It was just my mother and me, and occasionally my older brother. When we moved into this apartment, my mom got a break on the rent because she was going to fix it up. Whoever had lived there previously had up and left one night, leaving everything they owned. The landlord said he hadn't heard from them since. I remember thinking it was odd. After a while, I began to have nightmares. I would dream of the same man coming into our house every night. I don't remember him doing anything, I just remember having to hide from him and knowing he was bad. One evening, I was playing on the computer in my brother's room, he wasn't home, and decided to go see what my mom was doing. I walked out of the room toward the living room, which was at the opposite end of the hallway and was open to the kitchen, where I assumed she was making dinner. When I rounded the corner, she wasn't there. I walked back down the hallway, yelling for her, but again, nothing. I started walking up the stairs that were right across from my brother's room, but as I got halfway up, I heard an audible don't go up there, so I got scared and walked back down. I went back to the living room slash kitchen, looked out the back door, went back down the hall, and looked out the front door, then went back to the living room again to grab the phone to call for help. When I rounded the corner, she was standing in the kitchen, making dinner. I asked her where she had been, and she said she had been right there the whole time. To this day, it freaks me the fuck out. Also, when we moved out of that apartment, we were doing a final walkthrough and walked upstairs to grab the cat. We didn't see him, but we yelled his name and saw him come out of what we thought was one of those big air vents in the wall, which had a vent cover, but upon closer inspection, it was like a tiny room. We had lived there for two years and never noticed it. When I was about 12 years old, I was up early one morning before school, which was a rare occurrence for me. My mom started making pancakes but was busy with laundry, so she was ducking in and out of the kitchen to flip the pancakes and would leave to move the laundry forward. I think she was ironing clothes, actually. Anyway, I was sitting on the couch, which was about 20 feet or so from the stove. My mom left the room again, and then 10 minutes later she came rushing into the kitchen, saying oh no, the pancake. She expected to see a burnt pancake on the pan, but it had somehow been flipped while she was gone. Both sides were cooked perfectly, 
and the pancake was sitting on top of the stack on the plate next to the stove. And there was a fresh pancake batter on the pan. She said, wow, thanks for helping with the pancakes, and I laughed and said I didn't do anything. To this day, she doesn't believe me. I know she didn't flip it, and I know I didn't either. She said there were three pancakes on the plate and one on the pan when she went upstairs, and when she came back, there were four on the plate and freshly poured batter on the pan. No one else was home. It still frustrates me to this day that the mystery is unsolved. Now, whenever I make pancakes, I stare them down to make sure they don't move. I am resolutely convinced I met a leprechaun. I work at a hotel, and at 3 a.m. one night, a gentleman comes in in jeans and a gray zipper front sweater. He's five feet tall, with a head like a river rock, piercing blue eyes, and a thick beard that wraps his chin and meets his salt and pepper hair on either side of his head. In a fading Irish accent, he introduces himself as Jason, buys chocolate milk, shakes my hand six times, and gives me a hat. I tentatively put the hat in the back office. It's locked, and I am the only one who has access to it at this time of night. I go back to my work for a while, but about 10 minutes later I go into the back office for a piece of paperwork. The hat is gone. I saw Jason one other time, in the midst of a huge party, where no one was actually talking to him, just around him. He spotted me, insisted on shaking my hand again, and left. As if a switch were thrown, the entire party dissolved, and the bartender finished closing up. I asked her if she'd seen him, and she hadn't. When I was younger, I had this dream, more like a nightmare, where I was running on rock towards a ledge. A few steps before the leap, I look down at my feet and see the view below. I stumble, trying to stop, but instead roll downward onto rocks and then plop into the water, where all I saw was red. I was about 11, taking a nap in my mother's room, when I woke up absolutely hysterical, running around the house trying to find her. It felt fast, but so realistic with its little clarity. I was shaking all day. Here's where it gets bizarre. Fast forward about a year, it's summertime, and I'm at the river with a new friend, her cool older sister, and two hot boys. It seemed like paradise for a 12-year-old girl, right? At this point, we've been jumping off the same rocks all day, so we go farther up the river where there is no crowd, about two people since it was pretty difficult to get there. The boys keep jumping off this big rock, encouraging us to come up and try, but I was a little wary because of the gap of rocks you had to jump over to actually make it in the water. At this point in my life, though, I loved climbing, getting up high, and making jumps into water, impressing people too, so I made my way up there. Face palm. Immediately I felt fear stricken and wanted to back out, but it was an easy jump that was harder to get down and I would need their help to do it. Scared, embarrassed, and determined, I had one of the boys count down from three. I started running at two. But when he said one, I looked down at my feet and immediately freaked the fuck out. I honestly think having that dream messed the situation up even more because now I was scared shitless trying to prevent what I thought was going to be my death. It was terrifying. The moment was so fast and yet so slow. I remember thinking about how much I loved my mom, how devastated she was going to be, and how neurotically scared she had always been of anything ever happening to me. I was thinking so much that I didn't even feel the pain of rolling down rocks, only the final spin off a smaller rock and the splash of water that engulfed me. I saw red, which quickly turned to black. Then I swam for dear life and pulled myself halfway onto a rock as I coughed, trying to breathe. Once I got my breath back, I started yelling for my mom, muttering about how this was all just a dream, and crying. Not one of those friends even flinched to help. Her sister, whose face I saw as I came up out of the water, was just sitting there on the rock next to mine. As for the only two other people on the entire fucking riverside, they came running over frantically. The woman helped me over to the beach side, saying it was safer for me to lay in the water and not be taken out until the paramedics got there. While the man couldn't believe his eyes, he was so astonished that I was actually alright, saying that I must have been in gymnastics because he had never seen a tumble that bad. All of it scared me. When the paramedics got there, I was strapped to a board, and they life-flighted me to the nearest city. I couldn't walk for about a week and a half, but I was perfectly fine otherwise. Huge blessing. I don't really talk about the dream part of it at all, nonetheless, it is super bizarre to me and always will be. Me and that girl never hung out again. She also never gave me back any of the stuff I left at her house, RIP to my favorite jeans, and now I have a huge fear of heights that will probably never go away. But I am alive. I saw my father's doppelganger walk towards me on May 26, 2013. I was on a school trip to Paris, aged 17, at the top of the Pompidou Museum. On the roof by the restaurant, there is, or certainly was, 
a long glass corridor that gives a great view over Paris. Out of nowhere, this guy who looked identical to my dad appeared, even wearing the same long black coat my dad used to wear. He walked down the corridor towards me, then turned down the escalator. I took photos of him as he was walking, as it really struck me how similar he looked, I will put them up next to one of my dad's if I can find them, and showed my dad them when I got back. In May 2014, my dad died of a heart attack. Died on the 6th and was buried on the 28th. I truly believe that doppelganger was telling me I had a year left with my dad. I told people about it once and showed the photos, and they just got kind of spooked. I don't talk about it much, but I do think about it a lot. I am 25 now, but I still remember this. I lived in an apartment building when I was about 7. We were on the 4th floor. It was a brand new building built on the same lot as the one that collapsed before it. As far as I know, there were no casualties since all its residents had already left when it started titling. Anyway, this was years after that event. I was on the ground floor talking with my twin brother and one or two of my friends. There was a stair railing? That supported the stairs going into the building, while behind the railing was the basement. There was a ledge looking into the basement just beside the railing, if that makes more sense? Just imagine a rectangle beside a staircase. That rectangle was a hole looking into the basement below. So I was standing on the ledge, holding onto the railing, when all of a sudden I was out of my body, looking at myself. It's hard to explain, but everything was in slow motion. I was looking at myself from behind the ledge, a bit below my ankles. I saw a girl in white floating towards me from the basement, and I felt as if she was smiling, although I don't remember how she looked. I wasn't scared. It was actually calming for some reason. There was no noise. I saw her grab both my ankles, and I jolted. Everything went black. It gets even weirder. The next thing I know, I wake up in my bed in my apartment on the fourth floor. I had a huge headache. The first thing I did was ask my twin brother and my mom what had happened. She told me I fell into the basement, got up right after, walked up four stairs to my apartment, told my mom, then went to bed. My twin had witnessed the entire thing. I don't remember getting up after falling or walking up the stairs. I remember everything else. I saw a doctor, and everything seemed fine. No such experiences have been had since then. I still don't know what to believe. In my old house, we had an attic with two doors. One of the doors was painted over, and there was no doorknob, it was lazily converted into just a wall. I would often dream about that door being just a door, and I'd go in. The attic was furnished with the gaudy orange, brown, yellow, tan, and greens of the 80s. There was a hazy yellow glow to all the lights, and up in the attic sat all these relatives of mine, but they were all dead relatives of mine that introduced themselves to me. They weren't zombies or anything, but just people I knew had passed on. I met a lot of older relatives this way, some of whom I never knew. I sat with them as they smoked, played cards, and petted our family's old dogs and cats. They would talk to me about life, philosophy, and stuff. I hate that I can't remember much of it, but I always felt warm, comfortable, and loved when I would visit them. I had this dream frequently. One time I had this dream, and I was saying hi to everyone, and I saw someone new sitting on one of the couches. It was my great-grandma, and she had this defeated, sullen look in her eyes and wouldn't speak to me, even when I spoke to her. Why are you here? I asked her. You're not dead. She looked at me briefly and looked down again, saying nothing. I woke up and found out that my grandmother had died that night. This was not the only time it happened. I have this dream every single time someone on my father's side of the family, the family that owned the house or property, passes away. The only difference was that I no longer went to the attic. I knew what was up though, because when I saw my great-grandfather sitting at the kitchen table, eyes down and withdrawn, I said, you died, didn't you, grandpa? He looked at me and looked away. It still happens to me, and I honestly dread seeing that fucking house again. This has been going on for over 30 years. To people wondering about how I knew they were my relatives when I never knew them, they would tell me I'm your great-great-uncle Arthur, your grandpa is my nephew, etc. I would occasionally mention the relatives of my family who had no idea how I knew them. I had no answer for them, because what was I going to say, they talked to me in the attic. Not too many people know this one. When I was 16, like most teenagers, I was a bit too much to handle at times. My relationship with my folks was kept to the minimum due to a lot of resentment and a lack of conversation at home. At some point, it became a bit much for everyone, and my mom decided that forcing us to go to this church would improve things. I wasn't going to fight them on that, especially because time at church meant less time studying. It wasn't an awful place either, and they had a pretty good message without being pushy, regardless of your beliefs. 
Well, anyways, I get there, and I find out she actually signed us up to the disobedience of our family, meaning she believed we had bad spirits feeding off our energy. This consisted of a lobby where someone was constantly preaching, a secondary room with a long table full of people around it, and a moderator at the end of the table. I was never allowed in this room because I was a minor, but they would always start the session with me in there, ask me to leave, close the door, my parents would stay, and from there on, it was like a world war was happening in the room. Screams, chairs flying across the room, tables being turned, people crying and whining. And the moderator is trying to control them. This went on for months. We'd go once a week, sit at the mass, and have 30 minutes inside the room, with other families taking turns. By the end of the process, when the screaming and banging were substantially toned down, one day they asked me to stay in the room, since I had a lot of study on the doctrine and was only not allowed there because of my age, and visualize my two best friends' houses for them to do a cleanse. They basically ask you to picture yourself at the door and then walk around their houses. One of them was the basic lot of darkness, this room is worse than that room, stay there a little longer before moving to the next one, we will cast some prayers on top of this house to bless it. The second one was a friend who was highly neglected by his father, who had a whole new family in the house and would bribe him to stay away from family activities. He was also involved with a lot of drugs and, overall, lost. Once they asked me to picture myself at the entrance of his house, everyone at this table started freaking out. Saying they were not prepared for the amount of shit and negative things this house had and that they were going to get hurt or out of control. They were scared of being threatened, and some of them started hissing and screaming. I was quickly escorted out of the room before it all went out of control, and we were done after that session. Mom wasn't a fan of me hanging out with this friend anymore after that night. I studied in England, from America, from 2001 to 2005. My favorite subject was the Tudor family. My history classes were amazing. American studies are more about whitewashing, plus our political history just isn't that deep at this point. So I loved going to places and just sort of thinking about all the layers of stuff that happened over hundreds and hundreds of years. My favorite character is Anne Boleyn, who I legit think is one of the most important yet underrated humans in the history of modern civilization, but I shall not digress here. One day I went to the British Museum by myself. I stayed all day and wandered through all the exhibits. I stayed until closing time, when I heard warnings given over a speaker system or something that the museum would be closing soon. As I made my way to the front of the floor to go down and exit, an older gentleman in a museum uniform stopped me. I didn't see any other people on the floor around me. The man asked if I was enjoying the museum. I said I was. Then he said something like, I don't know if you'd be interested but I've just finished a special display room for a new exhibit. Would you mind taking a look? Of course, it's closing time, and this sounds dodgy, but then he says, it's a display of Anne Boleyn's private possessions. I could use an opinion on how it all looks. Of course, this is the candy in the van for me. I follow him to a door set into a wall in one of the exhibit rooms. He opens the door and steps aside, motioning for me to go in. The room is lined around all four walls with glass cases, and I think there may have been a case in the middle. It was mind-blowing. It seemed like all of Anne Boleyn's extant possessions were here, jewels, a prayer book, her infamous fork, and a hair comb. Everything is laid out in the lit cabinets, with the little placards next to them explaining everything. I was shaking and tearing up while I looked through everything. I made my way around the room slowly, and when I got back to the door, the man was still standing there watching me. He asked what I thought, and of course I raved about it. It was after closing time, but he said not to worry, he'd walk me out. As we walked, we talked about the tutors. I thanked him profusely and asked when the exhibit would be open so I could come back and see it again. He only said it would be open soon, thanked me for taking a look, and let me out of the locked door. Needless to say, despite checking very frequently, I never saw such an exhibit advertised. On my return trips to the museum, staff didn't seem to know what I was talking about. Even now, an online search of the British Museum's catalogue fails to show even a fraction of what I saw there that evening. I have no idea what happened, but I'm aware that the story sounds like a whole heap of bullshit, so I don't usually tell anyone until I'm in my cups. When I was 16, I had just gotten home from school. Normally my little sister would be with me, but she was at play practice, which meant I had a couple hours to kill until I had to pick her up. Both my parents were at work, so I was alone in the house. I took off my pants and was chilling in just the white button down from my school uniform and my underwear. The way my house is laid out is that there are two stories, with the second story being a split level. On the first floor, there are three entrances, including the front door, which is never used and double locked. The door to the garage, 
which is always kept unlocked since the garage is always closed, and the back door, which is double locked, goes out onto our screened in deck, which has another locked door. I had entered through the garage, shut the garage door, and went into the unlocked door to the house. I went to my room, second floor, to plug my phone into charge and went to chill in our bonus room on the computer. The bonus room is directly above the garage and is part of the split level. It is an open concept house, and there are no doors to the bonus room, just stairs that lead directly up to it. So I'm sitting up there with both of my cats, probably on Reddit, when I hear this really strange crashing noise downstairs. Then what sounded like the ruffling of window blinds normally I'd assume it was one of my cats, but both of them were in the room with me, and both of them had clearly heard the noise as they froze and stared towards the stairs that lead to the first floor. I called out for my parents, wondering if they came home early. No response. As I mentioned before, this room is directly above the garage, which makes a lot of noise when opened, and it hadn't opened. So I ran to the windows to look at my driveway and the street in front of my house, thinking maybe my parents forgot their garage door opener. There were no cars there except for mine. Then I started hearing footsteps, like someone was walking around downstairs. I was freaked out, so I ran to hide in the bathroom of our bonus room. I locked the door and turned the lights off so a potential intruder wouldn't see light under the door. I definitely didn't want to die in my underwear, though, and luckily I had left a pair of sweatpants on the floor of the bathroom from the night before. I put those on and stayed really quiet. Then the footsteps started getting louder and closer. It sounded like heavy men's boots stomping. It definitely appeared as if they were going up the stairs. I started shaking and crying while trying to be as quiet as possible. In the dim light coming from under the door, I looked for a weapon, and all I could find was a set of 5 pound weights I had been using for Pilates sitting on the counter. I picked them both up in my trembling hands, thinking I could throw them at an invader and make a run for it. At this point, I was cursing myself for leaving my phone in my room. Then the footsteps stopped. They stopped right outside of the bonus room. I started praying, and then, after about 15 seconds, the steps started going in the opposite direction and up the set of stairs from the split level that led toward the hallway where my room was. And where my phone was. But there are only 5 steps from the bonus room to that hallway. All I heard were 5 footsteps and nothing more. I sat in that bathroom for what felt like 20 to 30 minutes, crying in silence and scared out of my mind. But I heard nothing else. I finally got the courage to open the door, and it took forever to ease myself toward the entrance to the bonus room. I don't know if it was just pure stupidity or adrenaline, but my 16-year-old self decided that the best course of action would be to scream at the top of my lungs and run full force up the stairs towards my room, hoping to scare the invader in a bid to grab my phone. No one was in my room. I grabbed my phone, threw the weights on my bed, and took off, running down the stairs as fast as I could. Remember when I said the garage door was always unlocked? Well, that was what I went for first. To my utter horror, it had been locked from the inside. Now the logical part of me would say to just unlock it and make a break for the garage. But the crazy, scared part of me said, run for the back door. So I did. The back door that is always double locked was only locked on one of the locks. Before I could freak out even more, I opened that door and screamed, I've already called the cops fucker. Get the fuck out of my house. Or something like that, and I ran outside, barefoot, in my sweats and school shirt. Then I realized I had messed up. I left my car keys in the house. I freaked the fuck out and ran straight up the street to my best friend's house, looking like a mess, crying my eyes out, makeup running down my face, and pounding on her door, begging to be let in. She let me in, and I told her my whole story as I sobbed, and she tried to brainstorm what it could have been. We called my parents and asked if either of them had been home. Nope. Then I called my sister. Nope. The only other people with a key to my house were my best friend's parents, who were both at work. She called out of work, gave me a change of clothes, took me out for coffee, and arranged for her brother to pick up my sister and bring her to us because there was no way in hell I was going to let her go back to the house alone. We stayed at the coffee shop until my parents got home, and I told them my story. They searched the whole house and saw nothing out of place except the weirdly locked doors. They didn't believe me and said I just imagined it, but I know it happened. I slept at my best friend's house for three nights in a row. This memory has haunted me for over 10 years. My husband was driving, and I was in the front seat about to go to sleep with my kids all buckled up in seats behind me. It wasn't really a dream, more of a feeling like someone whispering in my ear softly telling me that my youngest, only four at the time, was going to be really sick and was going to have his appendix removed but would be fine after a few days. It was so clear. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and that is exactly what happened. 
Everything from how the room looked to the surgeon to the nurses who cared for him was exactly how they were in my dream. I have had this same thing happen twice before. Both times I told my husband, who didn't believe me, so I never said anything this time. I do not believe I am psychic, but it does make me wonder if there truly is a spirit or guardian angel.